This is part two of a video about two candles and a cake. I imagine it will make more sense if you've seen part one. So check out those links. Real cakes are not linear, unless they're Battenberg cakes. And then they've got Battenberg, the, the linear thing. And there's a tradition of mathematical puzzles with Battenberg cakes. But anyway, real cakes look more like this. This is a nice lemon drizzle. I appreciate your choice. Um, we did, by the way, everyone, we did buy a Battenberg. We did buy a Battenberg, but we're, we're, not, we're not using this one. We'll solve some other mathematical puzzles with that one, or just eat it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The, the, I wanted to upgrade, because the, like, the original puzzle was twigs, and you don't upgrade a twig to a two-dimensional twig. Um, so it's nice to comment that upgrading a puzzle purely for aesthetic things to set it as a nice puzzle also had mathematical consequences. I've got to put a random candle and a random cut on a two-dimensional surface, and then suddenly it's less obvious to me how you put a candle or a cut on a two-dimensional thing. Before I had many panics about this, I thought I'll just run a simulation rather than trying to solve it on a two-dimensional cake. So I got a Georgia profile to do a square cake. It was easier to draw before you criticise my model. In hindsight, I'm going to mention very carefully how I chose where the random things go, but I didn't think hard about it at the start. I just picked a random X coordinate, a random Y coordinate for each of the candles. And for the cut, I picked a random X and Y and a random angle. Uh, and I thought that was, that's definitely a random cut. And I'm, I was fine with that. And I ran my simulation, uh, which I haven't, I haven't made it look particularly pretty, but if I do run it again, uh, it ends up converging to about a third again. And I was like, well, what's really nice about the one dimensional one, it upgrades to a two dimensional one and cakes work. And this is it's, it's just above a third at the moment, but it's 0.3 something fine. And I went and did a talk about this at Maths Jam annual weekend and everyone was nice about it. And we had nice conversations. And in the back of my head, I was like, this is a little mathematical bug saying, are you sure you know what you mean by random when you're in not just a uniform distribution. And I wasn't sure, and I didn't think about it, because I was kind of naively lulled into a false sense of security because the number was what I wanted. But it turns out there are other ways to randomly assign a cut. And if this is sounding familiar uh, with something I alluded to earlier, your conversation with Grant about Bertrand's paradox was precisely about pick a random cut or chord on a circle. So forget the square cake, uh, which we could go and do the model with again, but let's upgrade to a real cake, definitely a circle. And I've got to put the candles on at random. And actually I'm happy enough that choosing a place for these to go at random is actually doable. Although you can do it in several methods and it's not obvious which one's best. Let's just spray points on like I did before, random X coordinate, random Y coordinate. And if they're outside the circle, reject them. So we'll get a random point on the cake. And that's a good way of uniformly spreading the points out. But it's the cut that's a problem, because what we're doing is randomly choosing a chord, pick two random endpoints like this point and this point, that would define that cut because any chord is defined by the two endpoints. Alternatively though, you could pick a random point in the circle, a bit like I did with the candle, like this one, uh, and say that's the midpoint of a chord and any point uniquely defines a chord in that way. But it's a different distribution of cuts and this is where you start getting into deep water. The nature of random is not as simple as you want it to be. Go and watch Grant's video for a big discussion about it. But what I did do was simulate the cake and candles cut problem with uh, round cakes and several different choices of how to do a random chord. I really enjoyed the conversation you had with Grant because you were annoyed that it wasn't well defined. and. I think mathematicians do have that sense of annoyance. You want things to be neat, but probability questions are often more philosophical than we want them to be. So this is a video of me choosing the two endpoints on the circumference, and the orange trace is where the chord's gone. I don't know why I picked this color scheme, but I liked it, and I ended up just mesmerized by the image. The thing is, the distribution is, is maybe not where you expected. It's kind of clustering towards the edges, and the middle is slightly less sparse, but it is quite uniform. So maybe this is arguably a good way of getting uniform cuts. But there's another way of choosing the cut. It's not a third. It's actually settling down to be about 0.16. That was after 10,000 attempts. So I believe this. If you choose a cut by this method, which if we're going to do it for real life, the, the real context would be like we'd put a spinner, we'd do a, a couple of spinners in the middle, and wherever it pointed to, we mark an endpoint and we cut there. It looks like we'd get about 0.16 of the time we'd get a candle on each piece. And that's not a third. It's not even close. Huh? Which kind of upsets me. Uh, it's almost a half of a third. It's almost a half of a third. Um, it, is it near to an eighth as well? But this is why the Monte Carlo methods and the simulations don't give you that sort of theoretical thing. They confirm theory quite nicely, but this time it means my theoretical thing has, has just not matured enough to sort it out. And if you run different simulations, here are just the pictures of what happens if you choose the cuts in different ways. So this cut is where you choose a random midpoint for the chord, and you see it hardly ever cuts or just less often cuts near the middle. And that's a good reason why we're getting different probabilities. This, this one ends up being settling down to about 0.19. This one over here is choosing a random radial point. So that's choosing some distance along a radius 
and there's some angle around the center to go and using that as the midpoint different distribution again and this one's doing what i did on my naive version of the square a random point and random angle adding more randomness uh, this one ends up to be 0.3 close to a third but not close enough this one ends up being 0.325 my main conclusion of this is that i don't know what's going on uh, and it's, it's sometimes nice to be mystified as a mathematician and realize that the real world of random distributions in two dimensions and in the situations like Grant discusses in this video is more complicated than you want it to be. We need to be careful about probability. I think in summary though, what I liked about this problem is that we took a basic twig, turned it into a cake problem. There's a nice lesson about solving things in two ways, but there's also deeper water. And you get a glimpse of how mathematicians work. They, they start with a simple problem and you realize that you tweak one part of the model and things get more complicated. Hey, that's where we get our fun out of as mathematicians. It wouldn't be super hard for one to do the mathematics of what the probabilities are once you decide your definition. Correct. Yeah. Uh, I well, just you, haven't, you haven't done that. I just but, haven't done it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the problem is which definition is truly random. Yeah, and that, that's the alarming thing, is it feels like surely there's one of these is better, but it's not clear that it is. You need to be precise about how you're modeling the real world because the real world is complicated. What's your, what's your personal preference for what counts as the, the truly random cut of the uh, cake? Let me answer that by the pictures. Uh, if you look at these, it doesn't feel like this is distributing cuts fairly, uh, maybe what we call uniformly. Uh, it feels like a random method. That's the random midpoint. Um, this one, they're subtly different. This one is clustering towards the edges a little bit, but not as much as this one. Whereas this one feels like it's colored in the circle. And that was me picking a random point by some method and a random angle. Uh, and maybe that double random application makes it look more uniform. It also backs me up and says it's roughly a third. <laughs> but I, I'm really wary of saying that's the correct one because it's tempting to, you want to believe the answers that you think are consistent. And there's no guarantee the reality works like that. And who's to say that when you cut a cake randomly and do all the cuts, there wouldn't be like a little hole in the middle, like of... And actually, this is where probability questions... And maybe the knife would touch the middle less often when you... It depends how you're going to randomly cut it. If, if you got, without briefing people on the complexities here, you just gave them a knife and a cake and said, right, I want you to repeatedly cut it at random, how would they do it? I, I think they'd hold it from one side and they'd just, like, hack at it. And we know, actually, that it's not going to be random because it's all going to come from probably this endpoint and we're going to be spinning around here. If they thought about it, maybe they'd do the double spinner approach and pick two endpoints, but that feels like a lot of work. Or you get a, what do they call it? A lazy Susan, put the cake on it, spin that round, stop it, and then go whoosh. Is it, if this was cranked up to about 90 miles an hour, it would be a more random demonstration of picking a random angle to cut. Shall I close my eyes and wait until I have no idea where the candles are? All right, yeah. How long are we waiting? Hang on, I'll do a, I'll do a turn you haven't seen as well, just to random up it a bit more. All right, let's see. Here we go. The lengths we go to for maths. Go ahead. If I slice this down and miss and just break your turntable, how's that going to be? Slice gently. Make sure you hit the cake. Say when. When. We're done. Yep. Ah, oh, we're between the candles. You did it. What are the chances? Don't answer that. Just. Only just. Yeah, the, uh, the point candle model was nearly not sufficient. Now Ben's got a deep video, and I mean really deep, about how he visualized and programmed some of this stuff on his own channel. If you'd like to check it out, well, there'll be links on the screen, down in the description, all the usual places. And you might like to reflect on why that is. But I really like, this is, I just really like the way this looks. Um, to be honest, this is what I was going for in the entire video here. <laughs>